It's not just the coaches poll that has Georgia as the favorite going into the college football season. The latest Sports Illustrated or SI.com rankings are out and they have the Bulldogs number one as well. Of course, the last time we saw Georgia, they were taking on the Warriors 41-10 in the Sugar Bowl. Ohio State's number two, followed by USC, Missouri, and Florida. By the way, the Warriors were preseason ranked 81st. Of course, UH will open the season August 30th on the road against the number five Florida Gators. A far cry from how last season kicked off for the Warriors, if you remember, Northern Colorado. And as far as preparation and intensity goes, the Hawaii players are acting accordingly. Coach Mack uh, did a PowerPoint and showed his coaching philosophy, and he said, uh, have a sense of urgency. That was one of his key points. Get it done now so tomorrow you don't have to worry about it. And so we're getting that, have that mentality right now where we get a, a job done now so when Florida comes around, we don't have to question how hard we work. Because we know what's at stake, you know. We're not playing Northern Colorado. We're playing the number fifth team in the country, and, you know, it's do or die, so we're ready. Oh, it's a lot more intense, you know. Number five team in the nation, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different approach. Uh, even though, you know, you go into a game, whether it was Northern Colorado or not, you know, knowing that you still have to play, but, you know, this is a quality opponent, you know, that you're playing against, and uh, it's going to be real competitive. Warriors held an afternoon practice session today and we'll do the same tomorrow. How's it going everybody? Warrior fall camp continued today. Now just 24 days away from Hawaii's season opener against fifth ranked Florida in Gainesville. And aside from the X's and O's, Warriors are hard at work on being physically ready in the best shape of their lives for the imposing 2008 schedule. We're, we're going to be a really fit team, you know, and uh, it's going to be good for us when it comes down to those games in the fourth quarter, you know, and you're exhausted and everything, but, you know, all this running and um, pushing ourselves, you know, it's going to be good for us. You know, not only uh, as a team, but also quarterbacks, you know, we're running a lot more, doing a lot more footwork drills and, uh, like, our legs are dead, you know. Like, usually everyone always teases the quarterbacks that we don't do anything, but I think, I think we do a lot more now, you know, and so if anything, it's going to be good for us in the long run, you know, get those legs strong. Warrior fall camp, day three now in the books. Practice continues tomorrow at four in the afternoon at the UH grass practice field. Warrior quarterback Tyler Grunke has every intention of joining his team at training camp. According to an interview with the Honolulu Advertiser, Grunke tells the paper he hopes to get his schoolwork in order by Monday. He'll complete his summer school course next week and expects by then to have the necessary requirements he needs to participate in practices. Coach Greg McMacken is still not commenting because of privacy laws. As for the Warriors already hard at work, some of them have showed up to camp after kind of cleaning up their act and compared to last year it's a noticeable difference where would the warriors be without their hair last season many embraced the old tale of samson and thinking maybe their strength lied in their long locks but this year there's power in being clean cut just a new new coach new team new look yes gone are most of the dreads and ponytails they've been replaced with razor sharp styles that are trimmed real close some of us dbs were focusing on you know this is a business so we're going to look nice we're going to play we're going to play good when we go on a trip we might wear you know we might wear something sweet but we're not going to say it yet but while some may be trying to dress the part others had their parents approval in mind when they reached for the scissors I've been growing on my hair ever since I came out of, you know, my first year coming to camp. But my dad, he's, you know, old school, you know, he's all about being clean cut. So for Father's Day, my biggest present to him was, you know, chopping off the hair. What do you miss most then about uh, the big hair? Uh, nothing really. <laughs> now it's much cooler, you know, outside or there, so I really don't miss it that much. Some of the coaches admit the changes come just when that long-haired look was growing on them. But you would seem like a guy that would applaud it because you're a pretty clean cut guy. You know, I was. I used to be when I, uh, a little while back, but now, you know, it, it's all about what's in the person. If he's got long hair, short hair, if he's bald, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. And I thought of all people, Cal Lee would say, yeah, cut it. But he says, oh, no, no, I like it. Liberal. Yeah. <laughs> I did a little man race for the starting job behind center at Warrior Training Camp. And according to head coach Greg McMacken, it's going to go to whoever will give the team the best chance of winning. So far, the coaches are pleased with how far the quarterbacks have come this early, they've come this far early in this camp. Greg Alexander and Brent Roush have spent the entire summer learning the system from Inoke Funaki and Tyler Gronke. Now it's just about who wants it more when August 30th comes rolling around. That, that's my sole focus right now. And uh, 
you know, that's, that's all I want right now. Funaki taught me pretty much the offense, man. He's a great guy. Me and Greg learning it together, you know. I mean, all three of us making each other better. I appreciate the help that I got, that's why, you know, and from the guys that were in front of me. And so, you know, definitely, you know, I think that's how you help to build the program, you know, as you try to help guys, you know, even if they probably end up doing better than you and beat you out or whatnot, but it's, uh, it's not about me, you know, it's about the team. And Coach Max says he'll decide on who will replace Colt Brennan in the next two weeks.